Okay, so uh, this is a little subset on uh, building Spanky Speed Shop uh, for uh, installing the auto pull pots, the, the chain things that are going to go in the concrete. Um, so there's some preparation that you need to do before you pour your concrete. Uh, if you don't do it before you pour your concrete, then you can always do it after, but you've got to drill the concrete. And because uh, my slab has that wonderful PEX inside of it, and uh, once the concrete's in, pace, in place, I don't want to drill into it because, you know, I can puncture the PEX, cut the PEX, destroy the PEX, and suddenly all the effort that I put into the radiant heating is for naught and it's useless. So. What we're going to do is we're going to build some inserts that are going to sit in the concrete that we will use after the concrete has cured to um, install the pole pots. So what do we need? Not a whole lot of complications. You're going to need some three and a half or some three inch um, schedule 40 pipe. Let me see if I can find one of this measured there. All right, three, P three inch IPS schedule 40. And the reason we want to go with schedule 40 is really important because uh, schedule 40, three inch pipe is three and one half inches across. See that? That's three and a half inches across. And the pull pots are three and a half inches across. So. This is going to make us a perfect um, insert for the pull pot. So I've cut these eight inches long. The pull pot needs four inches. I need two inches below the concrete, four inches for the concrete, and two inches above so that I can see it. Otherwise, it gets caught in the skim coat. It's a big pain in the ass to deal with. So these are cut at eight inches long. These are test caps, or also known as knockout plugs. And I've drilled them all in the center, and I have them installed here in these six there's one for each i'm putting in six full pots so i have them pre-drilled and then uh, i'm going to put another one like that and i'm going to put some glue in there and glue this rebar in so that it's solid so i'm also going to need some construction adhesive you get your construction adhesive make sure you get one that's rated for plastics most construction adhesives regardless of the brand um are not rated for plastics and so they glue you know wood to concrete and aluminum foil to freaking tuna fish or whatever i mean they glue everything to everything except they don't work well on plastics so get get one and i'm not advocating this brand it just happens to be the one that i bought but get one that's rated for plastics that's critically important so what we're going to do here and i can only talk about this at the moment i can't really demonstrate it because i'm the only one with the camera but uh i'm going to put some some of my adhesive right here and I'm going to glue that right on Ta -da! And I'm going to make sure that it's lined up of course with the rebar first and then I'm going to glue that in when I glue it in the rebar is going to be sticking out and it's going to come to just below the surface here so basically I'm going to have this pot with a stick of rebar coming out the end and I will show you what that looks like uh, in a moment Okay, through the magic of movie editing, I have magically put these in place. So what I have here is, this one's a little jiggy, I can just turn it and fix it. So uh, my rebar's in place, my caps are all in place. I haven't applied any adhesive yet. And you can see this is just, just raise this up so you can see what it is. So there, there's a little pocket, and there's a pocket on the inside of this. So this just plugs into the, to the PVC, and I have that pocket, and I'm gonna put, and I believe the correct word is dollop. I'm going to apply a dollop of adhesive there. I'm going to push that down and let it dry. On the underside, you'll see I have the other cap is inserted. And the reason that it's inserted already is so that this doesn't stick out too far at the bottom. So they're just going to kind of rest. So I'm going to apply that adhesive, let it dry. Add a little extra adhesive. Actually, I had a lot of extra adhesive, just one, two. And this is all I'm doing with that adhesive. And there's really no point in keeping it around for months and months and months. So I put in a little extra on the outside. And now I just, I just need to let them dry. Okay, I pried the cap off. And now I've taken this piece of rebar and it's kind of 
seat it in the hole a little bit and just push down to get it into the sand underneath okay and now i'm going to take my trusty ball peen hammer and i'm just going to tap this down all the way so that this seats two inches down into there and this goes into the sand so again it's very difficult to do this and maintain the video so I'll show all you right so it's you know tap 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 i got it in it's seated nicely all the way down nice and tight you can tap that one a little more this is in now I take the cap put the cap on why is the cap there that's so when we pour the concrete concrete doesn't fall in there so once this is all done this will be sticking up out of the concrete a little bit and uh I'll finish the video at that point okay, in time. So I cut the circle, take the hole saw, stick it in the foam. Pretty much that freaking easy. Take my little screwdriver, pop out the foam. comes out make sure it's clear everything out of there real nice take this guy pry the cap off the cap is pried off set it in the hole take the hammer tap it Push it down, it's inserted all the way. Tap a little more. It's inserted nice and tight. Ta-da! Super easy. Not so hard. Pretty easy.